You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa, and this is Friday, and we're hoping that after here, uh, you're going to flex. That's why we call it Flex Friday. We just take it easy and make sure that we unwind. But right now, there's a very worrisome issue that we need to address. Uh, it's been there. We talk about it all the time, but it cannot be overemphasized, and that is a child abuse. Uh, this is a this child abuse prevention is what we want to talk about because this is child abuse prevention month and what are these issues uh, that are most prevalent in stopping violence against uh, children so we're being joined by uh, Priska Onwebue communications manager Sese Yara Foundation Lagos State uh, Priska we're so glad to have you join us this morning good morning thank you for having me Okay, uh, like I said before we came to you, um, some people may be doing the same thing we are trying to talk against today, but may not know it that they are breaking the law and they're doing something that they need not do. So let's start with the definition or the description of what you will call child abuse. Can you hear me, Priska? Yes, yes. Okay, so child abuse is an intentional harm done to a child. So we have different, uh, an intentional act of violence done to a child, and we classify children as people um, below 18 years, children from 0 to 18 years, and it uh, encompasses a whole lot. We have physical abuse, we have sexual abuse, we have emotional abuse, verbal abuse. So any intentional act of violence done against the child is an abuse. So from um, beating the child, inflicting physical injury on the child, to verbal abuse of the child and telling the child you're nothing, you're not, um, nothing to write home about, there's nothing good that can come out of you, things like that are abuse. So neglect, ne child neglect is a very big form of abuse also. When you neglect your child and you're not providing the actual form of um, care that they need, because every child has um, the right to care and protection and even education. So to emotional abuse, you know, from neglect, most of the time, it, stems, it results into emotional abuse. I think I've also mentioned sexual abuse. Sexual abuse can be sexual assault, touching a child inappropriately. You can also have some act of penetration, physical penetration, um, in some sensitive areas of the child. When any act that inflicts violence or injury on a child is child abuse. What if when I send a child to go and hug pure water, something like that? Yeah. You know, because some families just feel there are things they do, it's normal. You contribute no matter how young to the family and you do the things that an adult should do. Yes, hugging actually is child abuse. Unfortunately, many people don't know that. And then they use the, um, the story of, okay, we are from a poor background, there's no way we're going to fend for ourselves. Is this child doesn't talk? How is he going to go to school? What then is an abuse? So it's why we're also beginning to sensitize parents and adults on the need to, first of all, about child rights, the acts, the rights of children. First of all, is care and protection. Because when these children go out to work, they're exposed to different forms of violence. You see people, you, you, most of them are exposed to area um, thugs, to many people who can pick on them and abuse them. Even talking itself when they should be in school is... Um, an act of abuse, but parents don't know. So again, it's very surprising. But there's a law against it. But people need to know that sending a child to work instead of going to school is an abuse, if, no matter what it is. The, a, a child is born into the world to, to take care of, at least until they are 18 or 21. So it's the, it's the responsibility of parents, no matter what, no matter the economic condition of the family, to take care of a child. Clearly, um, there is no doubt that uh, some modern notions of child abuse may conflict with our traditional values of raising children. Uh, we, we do have that bit of yeah. a conflict, but some are clear-cut abuses, uh, like child sexual abuse, uh, uh, like some that we've seen, some of the images you have, all sorts of bruises on the bodies of the child. No normal person will do that to a child and not know that this is an abuse, whether you're an African mother or not. So my question is, what government effort, let's assess government's efforts in tackling this and not just bringing it to the barest minimum, but totally eradicating it yeah, in possible, our society. Yeah. Okay. So I know that we have, first of all, what, what we have, the government has put in place the Child Rights Act. 
I just said, trying to, to have that act in place. Although some states are, are yet to domesticate the Child Rights Act. But I think we have made quite some remarkable progress, knowing that we have about two states now, or the Federation, who have adopted the Child Rights Act, including the FCT. We also have the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. Act. That's the VAP Act. So these laws are already in place. And they have clearly spelled out um, penalties for any form of abuse. So the government has taken a whole lot of steps okay, into putting acts together. The only of why emphasizing that states and um, local agencies should domesticate these acts and ensure that it is implemented. So we don't have an act, uh, a law issue um, quote, in, um, in Nigeria. What we have is an implementation issue. But the laws are in place against child abuse. The Child Rights Act um, clearly states the rights of children and penalties for violating a child's rights. And then we have the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act that also spells out um, some penalties. Some of them they range from 14 years imprisonment for sexual abuse to life imprisonment for defilement of the minor. So many other states have their um, localized or domesticated acts that are against um, any form of abuse. So I know that we know that the government are already making a lot of effort. Lagos, for instance, is very big on um, prevention and response to gender sexual based violence, sexual and gender based violence. And we already we have children's courts, we have family courts where they attend to cases of abuse for children. So we know that the government is doing a lot, and NGOs like the Chiara Foundation are also working with these agencies, with government agencies, to ensure that every child is protected and every child is uh, free or safe from abuse. But when you're seeing the, the cause, you also see the effects and all that, or, or you, you look at them the other way around. Sometimes you, you, there are things that we call child abuse, and like Maureen said, uh, it could conflict with uh, our traditional ways of disciplining a, ch a child. Uh, sometimes uh, the realities on ground will also be what will determine what can be done or with the child, or for the child, or because of the child. And now, if a child does not need to do X, Y, Z, are there things that are provided so that when you don't do that, you will have the opportunity to get what you would have gotten if you were, I don't like the word abused. For instance, a family that feels that the mother can sell uh, ogi somewhere else and the child can hawk pure water somewhere else and the father can sell uh, rat, rat poison somewhere else and they contribute all this money before they can get a meal. If you say you shouldn't do that part of it, there has to be some kind of palliative, there has to be some kind of cushion for this family. Uh, do you think that is uh, available in our communities because if it is not, it will mean that some of these things will only be talking and we cannot implement because the realities on ground do not give room for the implementation of this. So do you think as you're driving the, the policy of uh, making sure every child, no child is abused, you're also addressing the reasons why some of these uh, children are abused. And I'm talking about abuse, not the sexual abuse and the other uh, physical abuse, but some of these things that also present as child abuse, like making them them work like an adult and all that. So are you addressing those ones as well with the relevant authorities? Yes, we are. So we do um, advocacy, as mostly policy advocacy, and we also we have different steering committees and constantly meeting with the government agencies on why they should have uh, some of these things. Support should be in place for families. And as NGOs, some of us also um, have empowerment programs for low-income families so that we know that they can thrive and they can help the family um, grow, or they can help, they can sustain their families, especially for women. We have women empowerment programs and just to support the government, because again, we know that at the moment, the government may not be able to do a lot, and they may not be able to do so much. But then we go, we work hand in hand with um, local authorities, and we do our own bits in empowering uh, the families, mostly women. Our focus is really on empowering mothers because most of the time we notice that some fathers may have some bit of work they're doing, but the mothers may not have anything to do. So we started some form of men empowerment programs and there are a number of agencies trying to support women. And yes, we meet with some um, government authorities. Sometimes we have events and we collaborate with the government agencies or the state ministries to ensure that once they're involved, you also see the plight of these people. And again, we can only do one at a time. So it's you know, they say it's little drops of water that make a mighty ocean eventually. I know we are working towards it. 
and it may not be eradicated at once. You may see farm children walking here and there. But over time, um, as we begin to have the working government that we desire, we're going to be able to um, achieve that goal of having taken every child off the streets and giving them the actual protection and care that they deserve. Well, um, according to reports, 94% um, of abused children do not know where to seek for help. Uh, what uh, uh, arrangements are there for um, children who have suffered this kind of trauma, uh, at least who are old enough to seek for help? What arrangements are there for them and how can they access these arrangements? All right. So. Yeah, you're correct about the four percent of children not knowing where to seek help. And it's why we've actually that is one of the reasons the Chara Foundation was founded. The major aim is to ensure that children can access help. And so we do this first of all, we offer a free range of services. Children have that's it's why we want people to know that there's there's help for them and there's help for children for free at no cost to any child. When you call the Chara Child Helpline, for instance, you have access to counseling. Our helpline counselors are first of all there to counsel you on the next steps. We have emergency rescue, we have social workers who are out going to rescue a child from an offending environment and bringing them into our shelter, which is a non-offending environment. We even go all the way to taking the parents or whoever has reported, ensuring that they are safe also. We provide legal aid. So we still the case at the police station, we still the case in court, and go all the way to stand as prosecution witnesses for the child in court until the perpetrator is convicted. We also do medical, um, we offer medical support. So we know that medical evidences are, are, are important in corroborating evidences in court. So we, we ensure that as a medical evidence for, for instance, the case of child sexual abuse as a, as a medical evidence for it. And even if it's a case of physical abuse, there are pictures, there are a lot of evidence to show that this child is being physically abused or mentally abused. Then we offer forensic interviewing. It's something that um, is still Mr. quite new sorry in Nigeria. To, sorry to, to, to cut you short because time will not allow us. This, um, this helps. Uh, how do people yeah. access them, especially the government ones? The government ones, how do people access these government uh, facilities or numbers uh, that they can go to? Do you know any that they can go to? Okay, so I'll be speaking on behalf of Chiara. Don't work with the government, but we have a number 0800 800 801. It's a toll free helpline. And when you call us, we make we do referral calls because we work with the Ministry of Health and Social Development. So if the case is beyond sexual abuse, we will do well to refer you to either the Ministry of Health and Social Development, where they can place children in certain shelters. But the number to call is 0800 800 801, and you have, the child will get access to every form of help, including referral services. 0800 800 is the number to call uh, if you find yourself in an abuse abusive situation, especially as a child. Is it sexual? Is it? any kind of abuse, if your life is threatened, call that number and you will get the help you may need to help you survive. And if you see someone who is in an abusive relationship or abusive situation, not no relationship now, just situation, anyone any of child, that kind, any children. child that is there, a lot of them will not have phones. So it is your civic duty to do the needful and report to the relevant uh, authorities. authorities. Now we have a very short number, uh, 0800, 0800 800. 800. So you call that number and they will attend to you. Well, thank, thank you so you much, so much uh, uh, Priska Onuegbu, for coming on the show. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we were talking with Priska Onwegbu, Communications Manager, CC Yara Foundation, Lagos State. But right now, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be joined by Mudashiru Shitu to take us around the world of sports. Stay with us. <laughs>